everyone. I'm glad that you've come out this evening. We're going to start off with uh, the last page, number 70, in the Little Blue uh, hymn books. Number 70, the windows of heaven are open. And then after we've sung this one, let's take a favorite. So uh, I'll give you an opportunity to glance through there and pick a favorite. We'll sing one or two favorites tonight. Number 70.
if you take your Bibles, we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 6 this evening, Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer again as we read through verses 9 down to verse 13 of uh, Matthew chapter 6, and then we're going to pick up where we left off last week as we have begun uh, a bit of a focus on this Lord's Prayer uh, for ourselves so that we can learn more about the components of the prayer and how we need to uh, apply them even to our prayer life uh, tonight. Before we go into the, the reading of God's Word in our, our brief uh, devotion tonight, let's, let's ask the Lord to be with us. Father in heaven, Lord, we're thankful that uh, we can be here in this building tonight. We're thankful, Lord, that we can come around the Word of God and we can look at your Word and ask that your Holy Spirit enlighten your Word to our hearts as we've just sung. <clears throat> that, Father, you would uh, teach us not only that which... We have possibly learned before, but that which we maybe need to learn anew. And so, God, we ask that you would go before us in everything that is said and done. And, Lord, may your, you bless, Lord, your word tonight to our hearts. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter uh, 6 and verse 9. I'm going to read through the first uh, 9 to 13 verses, and then we will move on to where we are in this passage. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. The picture that you see displayed on the PowerPoint behind me this evening is a picture of a field that is white and ready to harvest. Each week I'm going to play a short little video uh, just to give us an idea of what prayer is all about or a component uh, about our focus. And this week's little video clip that I want to share with you tonight is actually from a Billy Graham crusade from many, many years ago. And he spoke on how to learn to pray. Let's listen to what he said. All right, you have to learn to pray. You learn to pray in the same way. Lord, teach us to pray. Now remember, in living this Christian life, you don't have to live it alone. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The moment you receive Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you to give you the power, the strength, the wisdom, the courage to live the Christian life. Now, the Holy Spirit also helps in your prayer life. The Scripture says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit helps you to pray. Now, may I make a suggestion? There are so many people that say, well, I don't feel like praying. I only pray when I feel like it. Then you're wrong. You should have a definite time and place every day to pray. You have an appointment. You have an interview with Almighty God. Suppose you had an interview with President Eisenhower tomorrow morning. You'd get up and say, well, I don't feel like seeing the President this morning. Or suppose you were going to be presented to the Queen. Well, I don't feel like it this morning. No, no, you'd be there. You'd be dressed in your bed. You'd go and present yourself to the queen. Well, every day, God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is waiting. He has given you an audience at any time of the day, and you fail to keep your appointment. Have a definite time that you set aside and pray when you least feel like it. The will is involved here, too. You say, I don't feel like it. All right, your, your emotion, your body says, I don't feel like it. My mind says, I don't feel like praying. My will makes me go and spend time in prayer because prayer is work. Prayer is work. 
And many times you make yourself cheap your appointment with God, and out of some of those moments come your most precious moments and some of your greatest answers to prayer. And that's exactly what we're doing here tonight is we are meeting together as an appointment with God to pray. John chapter 4 verse 35 says, Say not ye, there are four months, and then cometh the harvest. But behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white and ready to harvest. As we look at each one of the phrases over the last next number of weeks in the Lord's Prayer, I trust that it will be part of our learning to pray more effectively. Let's, this evening, look into this text and discover how we can take from the teaching to the disciples the Lord's Prayer and apply it even to our own lives this evening. We're going to pick up at the next part where it says, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. When you pray, Hallowed be thy name, we are climbing into a new level of respect of the petitions that are slated here or put within the context of these verses and this prayer. We are ascending to the very throne of God and the very heart of God to recognize who He is and what He has done for us. As we look at this phrase, Hallowed be thy name, the word hallow is in reference to God and who He is proper. The word hallow is a Greek word by the word hagias, which means holy or holiness. Hallow means to set apart or holy, to consider holy, or to treat as holy. So the best modern word that we can think of this evening, if we're going to look at how it be thy name, is just simply under the idea of what it means to give reverence to God when we pray. Last week we learned what it means to approach God, in that we are to approach God as our Heavenly Father and our dearest Father in Heaven. But as we approach Him, we ought to honor Him or reverence Him, according to the Scriptures, in respecting who He is and understanding who He is by the names that reflect His character. And so this evening, let's look at, first of all, we hallow or His name by our reverence. When we understand God's name, we reveal who God's desire is to be in relationship to us. Then we realize that His names invite us to know Him more. When we pray to God, our Father who art in heaven, His names actually give us the characteristics to know Him more and to be able to pray more effectively. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. That tells us in that scripture that what we see outside, the stars, the majesty of God in the creation of the world, they are clearly seen and they represent who God is. But as we pray to God and we think upon the names that are given to God, it ought to bring to our hearts and our minds remembrance of the characteristics behind those names and therefore help us to honor God more in reverence as we pray. There are approximately 18 names for God throughout the scriptures. There are more characteristics than that. There are basically 40 characteristics of God found within the scriptures, but there are 18 specific names that are found in the scriptures. I wonder this evening if anyone can name one of those names and do you know the characteristic behind it? Jehovah. Jehovah, and what is the characteristic behind the name? Right. Pardon? And he provides. No, Jehovah or Yahweh is done under the same definition, is the definition or characteristic that he is the Lord, for he is the, the God of all gods. And that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Anyone else have an idea of what is one of the names of God and the characteristics of God? Well, let me give you a few this evening, and I've got a pamphlet I'll hand out afterward uh, so that you can take these home and you can reflect more 
on the names of God. Elohim, if I use the word Elohim, what characteristic is that speaking about? Does anybody know Elohim? The characteristic that comes out of the name Elohim is that he is the mighty creator. That is the definition of the word Elohim, and it's found in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God, or in the beginning, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. So we can see in his names characteristics of who he is, so that as we pray to God, as we go to God in prayer, and we think even on some of the names that is uh, uh, concerning him, and the definitions of those names or the characteristics of those names, it will help us as a people of God to pray, I think, more effectively. If I say Al Shaddai, there's a song, Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai. What do you think is the definition of Al Shaddai? Anyone have an idea? Al Shaddai means the Almighty, the most powerful, Al Shaddai. Genesis 17, verse 7. What if I were to say, or switch and go uh, from uh, out, uh, some of the names of God that begin with E-L to the names that begin with Jehovah? If I were to say Jehovah Jireh as one of the names of God. He's our provider. He is our provider. Yes, exactly. He is our provider. So when we pray to God, our Father which art in heaven, and we go to God knowing we're going to our dearest Father in heaven, and then, hallowed be thy name, thinking upon the names of God. We can begin to pray, I think, more effectively because we know that according to the name of God, Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. So God, we know, we know by your own name that you will provide for us. How about the word uh, uh, Jehovah Rohani, or R-O-H-I, I don't know how to pronounce that, Rohi. It means the Lord, our shepherd, that he is there to guide us and, and direct us and to take care of us, even as we have learned in this past week as we look at the shepherds who visited uh, the, the uh, manger where Jesus was born. The Lord is our shepherd, and of course that's found in what famous reference? Psalms. 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What if I were to say the name Jehovah Rapha? Jehovah Rapha. Helper? No, not helper, but close. The God who heals. The God who heals. So as we learn the names of God, as we remember the characteristics behind the names, and we say, hallowed be thy name. It will help us not only in just uh, giving re uh, reverence to who God is, but it will help us in prayer knowing what God can do. Jehovah Sabbath is the Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 24. So praying with the knowledge of the names of God enables us to pray more effectively knowing what God is. Can do and so after the service tonight after we have our prayer time i've got a handout here that i'm going to give you to take home and each one of these lists the 18 names for god not all the characteristics because there's about 40 but the names of god and the verses where they can be found and the definition of the characteristic that those names uh, show or uh, uh, give to us as an example so when we hallow God's name, when we say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, it's so that we bring reverence to God, but it's also so that we hallow his name in our relationship. When Jesus teaches his disciples, and as we look at this text for our own selves, and we pray, hallowed be thy name, he's telling us to make the presence of God real in our life. To make the presence of God real real in our life. When we pray, hallowed be thy name, it is, in a sense, we are placing God on the throne of our hearts. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thinking about the names of God, 
and desiring that God be the first and foremost in our mind and in our heart. His name is hallowed in our relationship when we are praying in this way. When we mean the first and foremost, we, as we desire our life to reveal to others the very name and character of God in Jesus Christ. But we don't just hallow God's name in our reverence and our relationship, but we hallow God's name in our reflection. Paul once warned the church of Rome in Romans chapter 2 verse 24, these words, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. You see, it was a solemn thought to realize that the failure on our part to hallow the name of the Lord has da uh, disastrous consequences in causing the name of the Lord to be blasphemed by the world. And so when we pray each day, hallowed be thy name, we are saying in a sense, Father, your reputation is at stake in me today. May I live in such a way as to credit you in my person. May others see your character through my behavior and honor your name because of what they see in me. And so when we pray, hallowed be thy name, Let's think upon those words a little bit deep, deeper tonight. That it is to bring reverence to God's name, knowing his names and the characteristics behind them. It is to bring us in a closer to relationship with God, in that we are placing God in foremost of our hearts and our lives, and that we are to be that reflection of his name, so that others around about us would also Reflect and honor God. Elmer Towns, in uh, his book on praying through the Lord's Prayer, said that when it comes to honoring God's name, there are five essentials. First, God has a name. So we're not just praying to our Father, which art in heaven, which is the most cherished Father we can pray to, but we're praying to a God who has a name. But not just one name. A number of names that share the characteristics of who he is. So God has a name. Secondly, he says, God's name is holy. And that is the one key thing that we need to bring out of this idea of hallowed be thy name, or holy is thy name. His name is holy. And his primary characteristic is his holiness. And that God wants us to praise him, he says, is the third thing. That when we pray the words, hallowed be thy name, or think upon them, reflect them, or live them out, it's because God wants us to praise him for who he is and what he can do in our lives and even in answering our prayers. The fourth thing Elmer Town says concerning Halloween. God's name is that I can praise God's name in the Lord's Prayer. So use the Lord's Prayer at your convenience, not just as a uh, prayer of repetition, but use it as a formula or a pattern to try to pray more effectively as we pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the fifth thing he says is God will not force anyone to praise his name. Although all of his names ought to bring glory to himself and all the characteristics that they display, he will not force anyone to praise his name. And yet when we go to prayer and even when we use those words, hallowed be thy name, we are actually praising God for who he is. Although we know, according to Romans chapter 14, verse 11 to 12, there is coming a day, though, that the Bible says, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And one day everyone will give an account to God and will honor the name of God. But for now, we know that God isn't forcing us to honor him in this way, but we ought to. We ought to do it as much as we can. To the best of our ability in this way. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 it says, At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow 
of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So tonight, when we go to prayer, remember how we approach God. We approach Him first as God's uh, relationship, our Father who art in heaven. And then we approach God in His character. Hallowed be thy name. Father in heaven, Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to just reflect upon these verses as a devotion tonight and pray that, Lord, as we go to the Lord in prayer, that, Father, you would um, hear our, our cries, hear our hearts this evening, and that, Lord, you will hear and answer prayer. Amen. All right, we are going to go ahead and uh, break up for our prayer time at this time. So, men, uh, we'll go in the chili back because I didn't turn on the heater in that room. <laughs> so you might want to leave your coats off. Uh, the ladies will stay warm in here and we'll head off to the back. <laughs>